Hi everyone, it's Fader, and welcome back to another cool AI project. But this time, our video is a bit special, because we're going to showcase the AI, explain the thinking process behind it, and then code it together as a small tutorial. And yes, we are coding an AI that can play survival shooter games by itself. So let's start with the thinking process. For this AI, I want to use something called the cost matrix technique. What I mean by that, is the AI will have positions matrix around him and you can see it now by the green cubes in the scene tab then after each update tick the algorithm will calculate costs of each position and then the AI will choose the best cost which is the lowest and move to that position the cost can be done in so many ways and each game will have different calculation methods for this game I have the cost decrease the closest the monster is so the further the monster the lowest the cost is and the better the position and for example if you wanted to add power ups to the cost matrix we can simply do that by increasing the cost the closer the power up is but we need to increase it by double so the AI will charge toward the power up to recap we simply have the positions around the AI with cost and we calculate the cost once per tick and then let the AI choose the best cost I wanted to build this AI on an already made Unity game so anyone is learning Unity right now can start messing around with AI and I will link the tutorial of making this game by Unity in the description below and you can download it in the asset store as we are going to show right now and after importing from the asset store you go into complete game folder find the scene and run the game and yes it's running perfectly from the asset store if you download it and I am using now Unity 2019.1.10 After that we have to go into the script folder into the player folder and make two new scripts the player movement AI and the player shooting AI and let's open them and start coding Let's start with the player movement AI First of all we need to add the project namespace it's important as I've explained the code run on update ticks and to program that you will use iIlluminators in Unity having a while through with three main functions the reset arrays function, the calculate cost and the move function and will end with a yield return new wait for a second and you will have here the duration of the update tick first function the set position function have two things first of all we have AI position cost array and AI positions vector array the first one is float and we have to initialize them and reset them to zero first part is to initiate the float array second part is initiating the vector 3 array and to add the position of each square around the player by using the x and the z of the new vectors to move them around now we have to swap it in the start movement function and start working on the calculate cost function function we will use physics overlap sphere function to get all the enemies colliders around the player and now each collider with a tag enemy we should add it to the cost using vector 3 distance between the AI position square and the enemy itself and we do this operation for all enemies and in all positions before moving on we have to check that the enemies in our game have the tag enemy if they don't we have to go to unity and add the tag and then add it to the enemies now it's the time to write the function called get best position and this function will return the best position for the player AI to move to and we do that by simply moving along the AI position cost array and choosing the minimum cost and then returning the AI position now it's time to add the nav mesh agent to the code but before that we should add a small boolean called should move and this boolean will become true if there is an enemy around the AI and will be false if there is no enemies around the AI and it will help us to tell the nav mesh agent if it's true to set destination towards the best position by using the best position function and if it's false to go to the middle of the game away from the corners we need to just copy the animating function from the player movement script and make it this function take a one boolean called walking and this boolean will take its value from the nav is stop value function which tell us if the AI is moving 
will be true, animation will run, and if it's false, the animation will stop, and we will have to put this function into the update method. Before testing the script, I just want to add on drop gizmo script that will help us visualize the squares around the player. I will not explain it right now. You can find the scripts on my GitHub page and links in the description. It's very simple and the AI can work perfectly without. And by that, the player AI movement is finished and it's time to be tested. But before that, we ha all you have to do is to go to the scene, locate the player, remove the old player movement script, and add the new player movement AI script and don't forget to add the nav mesh agent to the mix and let's hit play and yes it's working and the player move by its own using the small AI we wrote just now now let's get on and start working on the player shooting AI this script is much simpler than the movement script because here we don't have to change anything we just copy all the player shooting script and remove any access code, you have to change one thing. In the player shooting script, we used to press the left mouse button to shoot. But here, the AI just want to shoot by itself without our input. So we have to add a boolean called able shooting. When this boolean is true, the AI shoots and if it's false, he doesn't. And now we need an update tick function, the same as player movement AI. And this function will turn on and off the able shooting so the AI will know when to shoot. We start by creating a small function that will get us all the enemies around the player and put them all in the list. And we'll use the same function as the player movement AI, which is the physics overlap sphere. And when gathering all the enemies around the player or the game objects with the tag enemy and add them to the list, now we can go through all the list and figure out which enemy is the closest to the AI so the AI can shoot at that enemy. After finding the closest enemy, we put it in a game object called target enemy and then add to the update function. After the able shooting is true, we need the AI to make the player object, look at the target enemy and then start shooting. And when this enemy dies, the able shooting will be false and we will repeat the operation finding the closest enemy and adding it to where to the target object and then the AI will start shooting automatically at the closest enemy and able shooting will be false when there are no enemy around the AI now let's test everything out but before that we need to go to the gun barrel in the player object in the scene and locate the player shooting script remove that script and add our script the player shooting AI just fill the gaps with the face light and the player object and let's press run and yes the game is working the AI is moving around and shooting at the closest enemy you can make the game run a bit and this video was a small demonstration about the cost matrix technique about coding AI that can play survival shooter games or the top down zombie game or maybe a platformer or anything else that can be measured by costs so in a simple word, this technique consists of having a lot of positions or a lot of actions that the AI can have or can do and then make every action has a cost and then let the AI simply choose the best cost and perform that action. So we can, if you want to perform this uh, algorithm or this technique on a space shooter game, we can let the AI have moving left or right or shoot. We have three costs and we can operate this cost by for example, if an enemy on the screen or an asteroid on the right or an asteroid on the left, then calculate the cost and the AI can maybe see now it's, oh, it's now it's very perfect or very good to shoot or now it's very good to move to right or move to the left. It's up to the cost of its position or each action. So guys, if you like this video and like this technique, you can find the scripts that we wrote right now and my GitHub page and I will put the links in the description below. And in the end, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you all in the next episode.